Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In this video, we're gonna look at a few different options using exchanges that we haven't looked at before. First, we're gonna look at the flexibility and power that using exchange to exchange routing gives us. Then we're gonna look at how we can use a new exchange called the headers exchange to also selectively route messages through our system. And finally, we're going to look at another new type of exchange one that can be installed using a RabbitMQ plugin called the Consistent Hashing Exchange. So like we said, the first thing we'll look at is exchange to exchange routing. Exchanges can not only be bound to queues in RabbitMQ, but they can also be bound to other exchanges. And this gives us excellent flexibility when creating our system as messages can be routed in the most complex way possible. But I guess before you consider using exchange to exchange routing, consider that simplicity of a system is also important and simple systems are often the easiest to maintain. So using a very complex exchange to exchange routing system might not be the most efficient solution for your problem. So for instance, we might have a system where we publish a message onto a direct exchange. And as we know, a direct exchange can decide where to send a message based on its routing key. In our example, if the routing key is black, we might simply just publish it to a simple queue. However, if the message is sent with the routing key green, then it might follow a different flow and say in this instance, be routed to another exchange, perhaps a fanout exchange. When this fanout exchange receives the message, it then routes the message onto a number of different queues using the fanout's ability to send a message onto all the queues it knows about. So you can see that we can create more and more complex systems using exchange to exchange routing, like we see here for the message sent with the routing key of green. And we can link any exchange to any other exchange so we could link a direct exchange to a fanout exchange like we've seen in this example, or we could link a fanout exchange to a direct exchange or a fanout exchange to a topic exchange or any combination. We can even chain exchanges together so we can bind one exchange to another exchange who then in turn binds to more and more exchanges. Another option that we have when using RabbitMQ is using the headers exchange to publish a message throughout our system. The header exchange is similar to the direct exchange in that it uses some parameter to decide where to route the message. In this case, it uses the contents of a headers table to determine where to route the message rather than the routing key of the message. So when using the headers exchange, we create a headers exchange and publish a message onto this headers exchange with a number of headers. These headers are sent in the basic properties data structure that we saw in the previous video. And the headers are basically a list of key value pair strings. So in this example, we have the header of value Brian with the key name. And that is sent as part of the message onto the headers exchange. The headers exchange is then bound to one or more queues using a similar binding mechanism that we saw when using the direct exchange. And we wanna use the headers properties to send a message from the headers exchange to these services. And depending on what headers are on the message, that will determine which service it is sent to. So to bind a headers exchange to a queue, we need to provide certain binding arguments which are set when binding the headers exchange to the queue. The binding arguments will be, again, a list of key value pairs, and one of them will be something that's called the X match. So say, for instance, we wanna bind the headers exchange to the queue connected to service A. Our binding arguments might be something like this. We can see we have the X match key set to the value any, and then we have name, Brian, and age 47. What the X match argument does is it tells the headers exchange that in order for a message to be routed from the headers exchange to the queue connected to service A, one of the headers on the message must match either the name Brian or the age 47. So in this case, because we have used X match any, as long as any of these arguments match the headers on the message, the message will be routed successfully to the queue connected to service A. So in this case, because the header Brian matches the argument Brian, even though the age 47 isn't there, the message will be successfully routed to service A. The alternative to using any as the X match argument is using all. And in the case of service B, we'll bind to the headers exchange using the X match all argument. So in this example, you can see that it's bound using the X match argument all and the exact same keys for name and age. So in this case, the message with just the header name, Brian, will not be routed to the queue connected to service B because it does not have the age 47 header declared on the message. 
it needs to have all the arguments specified in the binding between the headers exchange and the queue. So if in our case, instead of just sending the header with name Brian, we also specify the age as 47, then the message would be successfully routed through the headers exchange to service B. Say if we added another property again to the headers on the message we are sending. So now we're setting another header called location USA. This message would still be sent to service B because as long as all the binding arguments mentioned in the argument section between the header and the queue match the arguments on the header sent in the message, the message will be routed. It doesn't matter if the headers on the message have more headers than those on the argument set between the header exchange and the queue. So in this case, this message with the three headers set will still be routed to both services. The final thing we will discuss is the consistent hashing exchange. RabbitMQ has four exchange types by default. The direct exchange, the fanout exchange, the headers exchange, and the topic exchange. The consistent hashing exchange comes bundled as part of the RabbitMQ default installation, but as a separate plugin that needs to be installed. Installing the plugin will enable the use of the consistent hashing exchange. The goal of the consistent hashing exchange is to distribute, possibly equally, messages that are sent to the exchange across the queues that are connected to it. So let's say in this example, we've declared a consistent hashing exchange and we have three queues connected to the three services that we want to equally distribute messages to. And you might say that this is possible already using the work queue or competing consumer pattern that we've already looked at. And this is true, but using the consistent hashing exchange gives us a couple of more options. For instance, we might not want RabbitMQ to decide which service the message goes to or which queue the message goes to. We might instead want the message to be routed based on some property of the message itself. We also might want to weight our services and our queues so that one queue receives slightly more messages than the other queues. This might be required as some services which are connected to some queues might have a higher level of hardware provision than others and thus can handle more message load. Finally, we might want to do this because we want all the messages that are pertaining to a certain object or instance sent to the same queue and thus the same service. So for example, in a service that processes scores for football games, we might want all the scores for a specific football game sent to the same queue always, rather than round robin across multiple queues. So like with all exchanges and queues, we need to bind each queue to the consistent hashing exchange. And when we're binding, we need to pass in the binding key or the routing key. In the case of the consistent hashing exchange, this should be a simple numeric value. And this numeric value indicates what proportion of messages should be sent to the queue in question from the hashing exchange. So if we were to declare the binding between service A and the consistent hashing exchange with a routing key of one, and then we also declared the binding between the consistent hashing exchange and the other queues with a, a routing key of one or the same value, then what we are telling the consistent hashing exchange is to treat all queues as equal and don't route any more messages to one exchange than to another. If instead we said for the routing key of the queue connected to service B to have a routing key of two, what we are essentially saying is we want this queue to receive twice the messages as it usually would. So basically we would expect the queue connected to service B to consume the same amount of messages as the queues connected to service A and service C. And under the hood, what this is essentially doing is it is doubling the hash space that is allocated to the queue connected to service B than it is for the queues connected to service A and service C. When a message comes in, it sets its routing key. This routing key is then hashed by the consistent hashing exchange. The hash is then assigned to one or more queues based on where it falls in to the hash space. As we've seen earlier, the queue connected to service B, because its routing key is two, will have a larger hash space than that of the queue connected to service A or service C, and thus it will be more likely that the queue connected to service B will consume the message. If we send another message in with the same routing key as before, that message will be guaranteed to be routed to the same queue as before. Changing the routing key slightly, in this case, changing from 83 to 84 at the end of the routing key 
could completely alter the hash and thus could be sent to a completely different queue. Again, it is most likely that this message will be sent to service B and the queue connected to service B because that queue has a bigger hash space allocated by the consistent hashing exchange. However, over time, and if our messages are sent with very high entropy of root and key, i.e. the root and keys differ quite a bit, then we should end up with an even distribution of messages across our queues based on the root and key they were created with. So we would expect service B to receive half of the messages that are published, while service A and service C both receive a quarter. If we came along later and added a fourth queue to our system, this could completely screw up our hash space and thus we would be no longer guaranteed that a message sent with a specific routing key would be routed to the same queue. So we need to be careful when using the consistent hashing exchange that we do not add additional bindings to the consistent hashing exchange once the original bindings have been added or if we do add a binding that we are aware of the consequences. In the next two videos we will look at both C Sharp and Python implementations of all the topics we talked about here consistent hashing exchange, exchange to exchange routing, and using the headers exchange. So if you want to see how these are implemented in practice, stick around for those videos. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video.